What it do, flight crew? FTC. Flight team stand up. We got the man Jimmy Eye Roller. Something I never thought I would see. Let's check it out. Jimmy Butler, Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Chris Paul, Luka Doncic, Jalen Brunson, Stephen Lottery Curry, Jason players. Tatum, Brandon Ingram, John Morant, Jalen Brown, DeAndre Ayton, Kyrie Irving, Pascal Siakam, Desmond Bain, Jordan Poole, Brandon Clark, Carl Anthony Towns, Joel Embiid, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, CJ McCollum, Anthony Edwards, Why is he Donovan these Mitchell, players? Chris Thompson, and Nikola Vucevic. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did I just name 26 random NBA players with absolutely no context? Well, they're not random. These are all the players who have outplayed Kevin Durant in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Oh, damn. I've seen a lot of things in my day, but never, ever did I think I'd see the day where Brandon Clark outperforms Kevin Durant in the playoffs. And yet here we are. After being held as the favorites coming into the 2022 NBA season, the Nets have been bounced out of the playoffs in a first round sweep thanks to arguably the worst playoff series of Kevin Durant's career. Man. Is this the worst like playoff that. run we've ever seen from an NBA superstar? Or is Durant just the latest Strange, addition to said, a long um, list? I feel like Jordan Poole's about to pass up Kevin Durant. time playoff meltdown. After his uh, performance today. Today's video is brought to you by SeatGeek. Skipping right through here. The Perfect. date is May 7th, 1995. The Chicago Bulls are facing the Orlando Magic in the second round of the NBA playoffs. Wow. Michael Jordan had just returned to the NBA six weeks prior after his first retirement and was still shaking off the rust. The Bulls knew the Magic were going to be a tough matchup, but at the time, no one knew just how dominant this Magic squad was. Only 27 years later can we look back on this game and say that it would go down as the worst playoff performance in Michael Jordan's entire career. This is a 95 they said? So what's considered a bad, bad game for Michael Jordan back in the day? Damn, I would have made half these shots in my sleep. Yo, what was that? Oh, that Penny Hardaway was playing? He was number 45. Eight turnovers, 36% from the field, and 0 for 2 from 3. That's not even the bad, man, stat though. line of Michael Jordan's career. The Damn, Bulls that's goatness. Because LeBron's worst stat line is like, what, four points he scored and one Michael time? ended up with a team score of 2.6. An average and playoff, this is a playoff game, game in the 90s. NBA player Way tougher for league, hand checking and everything. That for a single game, Michael Jordan played considerably worse than an average player. On that night, MJ wasn't the best player on the court, or the second, or third, or fourth. In fact, Michael had one of the worst games of anyone that suited up that night. This is the first, and probably last time you'll see MJ at the bottom of any sort of list on this channel. And I bring up this infamous 1995 playoff game because after seeing Kevin Durant play in this year's playoffs, I began to wonder, how bad can things truly get for an NBA superstar? It's one thing to miss some shots, get on a bad run and find yourself struggling to get out of it. It's a completely different thing to collapse for an entire playoff series as your team gets swept out of the first Damn. round of the playoffs. But he only took 11 shots, so it makes it bad, man. I have never seen him play or even act like this on the court. He really didn't even he play, but he didn't attempt that many shots. That's the problem. I was wondering if he was dealing with some sort of serious injury. Are KD and Kyrie beefing or something? Did Durant bet against the Nets in this series? I'm being serious. Those are genuine <laughs> questions. I've never seen Durant look so hesitant and disengaged and just off. The last time we saw KD in the playoffs, he was averaging 35 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists a game. He's now with the Warriors. The Nets and nearly taking down the eventual champs in the Bucks by himself. What happened? 
Just take a look at Katie's playoffs numbers throughout his career. There's a steady increase in production and efficiency for over a decade. Even last season, at 32 years old, after not playing basketball for a year, his numbers were still off the charts. Now, here's the scoring numbers from this year's playoffs. I'm looking at a cliff right now. From the Kevin Durant we all know and love to this player that seems so unsure in himself and his abilities. We all watched this series unfold and we saw just how bad he was playing. But the extent of his troubles goes much further than you may think. The Nets are the only team that didn't win a single playoff game in this year's playoffs. This is the same team that was favorited to win the finals at the start of the season. Well, almost the same team with the subtraction of James Harden and the addition of Bench Simmons. He doesn't Bruh. have oh, the God. heart. Oh. This guy doesn't have it. Yeah, sorry guys, the new words on maps out. <laughs> He's so Yo. But I asked myself, is this the worst playoff run from a superstar? Bro, you know what I actually low-key just thought about, too? Like, this going to be another possibility. What if Simmons wants to just, like, low-key quit, like, the NBA and wants to become, like, a professional streamer? Which means, in professional it means, like, full-time, where you're, like, five days a week type-ish. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, and some bad that'll be crazy. Years. Playoff series that made us question the entire legacy of a player. Monumental choke jobs. But was Kevin Durant's Whoa, first round series Paul, against the Celtics seriously? one of the worst we've ever seen from <laughs> an all-time talent? Well, I checked. I searched through hundreds of playoff series by some of the greatest players in NBA history. And the answer may not be what you expect. Okay, so here's a chart of the worst playoff performances by all-time greats over the last 40 years, with game score on the y-axis and net rating on the x-axis. Now, I only included seasons once a player reached their prime, and immediately there's some key points that jump out. This region, right here, is the legacy tarnishing region. If a player has a playoff series that lands them in this region, it will inevitably lead to harsh criticisms of that player and their abilities as a whole. Within this region, you will find a handful of the worst playoff series by some of the greatest players of all time. Wow. But you know what series you won't find in this region? LeBron's 2011 finals against the Mavericks. One of the all time biggest playoff meltdowns in NBA history. And it's not even close to one of the worst series by a superstar that we've ever seen. Really? Here's Stephen Curry's 2016 finals performance, where after winning the first and only unanimous MVP in league history, Curry had an absolute meltdown in the finals. His team blew a 3-1 lead, and to this day, he hasn't heard that the That was because I think Draymond got suspended one game. collapse was in 2011, Curry's collapse in 2016 was even worse. Or what about Kobe Bryant's disastrous performance in the 2004 NBA Finals? Where in his prime, Kobe averaged just 22 points per game on 38% shooting from the field. Bro, that is good. And a good. 17% shooting from three for the series. 20 the plus Lakers points against the prime Pistons and Spurs era? In the series, and Kobe would watch That's why I always been telling y'all, man, early 2000s, man, man is way better. His entire career. RFB Kobe is out of those passages. By a superstar bro, in the history. Pistons back in the but day, bro. Somehow, Shaquille like, O'Neal matched this piss poor performance it's with like, the meltdown. Literally, imagine like five starting NBA Patrick finals. Beverly's with, with just Wade good, decent scoring the ability. Heat, Shaquille no O'Neal had the worst stretch of playoff games in his entire career. 14 points and 10 rebounds a game while shooting just 29% from the free throw line <laughs> and no being an all-out liability on defense. That his average game score throughout this six-game series 9.6, literally equal to that of an average performance by an average NBA player in the finals. The man scored five points in game two and just nine points in game six. This series should have been a huge black mark on Shaq's legacy, but it's not. 16 years later, and no one even remembers the fact that Shaq was getting benched in the NBA finals. But wait, it gets worse, because back in 2014, Dwayne Wade put together the worst finals appearance by a superstar in modern NBA history. 15-3 and three a game on 43% shooting and finishing the series with an average game score of just 7.9 and a net rating of negative 7.8. A series this bad in the finals kind of makes you wonder how a performance like this went free of virtually any criticism. 
Maybe in the moment Stephen A. Smith spouted out a well-worded monologue, but that's about it. Eight years later and this series collapsed from Dwayne Wade, might as well have never even happened. And believe it or not, there have been multiple superstars that virtually never had a bad playoff run. Here's Tracy McGrady's worst playoff series against the Jazz in 2007. Here's Dirk's worst playoff series against the Rockets in 2005. Larry Bird and Kawhi Leonard have never had a bad playoff series once they entered their prime. And with impossibly great consistency is Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan, pretty much being the best all the time no matter what. So if these are the worst playoff series by some of the greatest players of all time, where does Durant's round one series against the Celtics land? Well, right here. Far from some of the worst playoff runs we've ever seen. Did Durant have a good first round series? No, far from it, especially by his standards. But let's look at the big picture here. The man averaged 26, seven and six a game and nearly had a 40 point triple double in the closing game of the series. Now sure, we're used to seeing even more from Kevin Durant and the fact that the Nets got swept out of the first round certainly doesn't help his case. But I mean, which is worse? Putting together a masterpiece of a choke job in the finals with a championship on the line or getting bounced out of the first round of the playoffs long before you even had a shot. Wow. If you think this is the worst meltdown from a superstar in the playoffs, I've got some news for you. It's not even close. If this is the worst that we've ever seen and will ever see out of Kevin Durant, then it's a whole lot better than what we've seen from other all-time greats. Kobe was a shell of himself in a final series that nearly ended up in a sweep. Shaq was getting benched in the NBA Finals. But because nah, the Miami Heat walked away with the championship thanks to Dwayne Wade turning into God himself in a Heat jersey, Shaq's performance nah, got swept the under heat. the rug. Back in 2010, Kevin Reeves. Garnett averaged just 10 points per game against the Orlando Magic in the Eastern Conference Finals. But the Celtics still won in six, so I guess we'll just act like that never happened. Don't get me wrong, seeing Kevin Durant go 0 for 10 in the second half of a playoff game almost feels like some sort of dream. Like I should be waking up any moment now. Watching Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving default to Bruce Brown in the playoffs. Right, this dude Brown wouldn't even be in the league in the early 2000s. He'll be fighting to be water boy. Moment. But the fact I is, called that out. no matter how good a player is, no matter what legacy they've spent years building, every single player has had a playoff run they wish they could get back. A series where they wish they could hit the reset button on and get another chance at. And this round one series just happens to be Kevin Durant's. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, until next time. As usual, man. Coming up with the last track to next one on the world. So, fuck!